Welcome back, everyone, to the second episode of the 27th Ball Player Podcast. It's Nick with you again, and we're here to come off of a great opening weekend, especially after, f- I was going to call it Friday, after Thursday. Man, I hate how they do opening day, then you got a day off, then you got the rest. But after the opening day on Thursday, things did not look really too promising. I mean, Corey Kluber, he didn't make it out of the fourth inning. We gave up 10 runs, and even though we came back, lost by one, which that that made it exciting. But the pitching-wise, we were a little shaky, a little worried. But fr- I keep wanting to say Friday, but Saturday and then Sunday, Red Sox offense went off. Even though, once again, Saturday pitching, not too good. Today, it was much, much better. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is being recorded shortly after the Red Sox won Sunday afternoon. So when you're listening to it, if you listen to this on Monday afternoon or anytime during the week, you'll know that when I'm talking, I'm meaning Sunday night, April 2nd. Though uh, with it, uh, you know, it was a, it's a very exciting weekend, not only for the Boston Red Sox, but for the Worcester Red Sox as well. But we'll get to them later. Overall, I just want to say I am thrilled with how this team has looked so far through three games. As I said before, it could either go very good or really bad with this team, especially the way that they're built. If the offense doesn't play, it will be a long season. But if we go by three games, first time ever where they've averaged nine runs a game through their first three. No, I'm sorry. They actually scored nine runs each game. (laughs) 27 runs through three games. You don't see that often. Hopefully, well, you know it's not going to continue during the season. It's impossible to average nine runs a game in baseball. You're going to have your cold streaks. And when that happens, you got to hope that your pitching does much better. Tanner Helk was great today, except for the fifth inning. He had a couple mistakes in there, but first four innings, he was cruising. Um, I hope that we can see something like that from Chris Sale. Hopefully, once it gets warmer, Corey Kluber can grip the ball better because he was having trouble locating pitches on Thursday. But as we all know, it was freezing that day. And yeah, it was interesting over the weekend. Friday in Worcester, we had Garrett Whitlock. He looked good, but I will note his velocity was dropping the further he was in the game. A lot of people will point to that as maybe he should be a reliever. I want to say it's building up stamina still. I want to, I, I believe he'll have one more start in Worcester. And depending on how that goes, he'll probably join the club then. He'll probably be back up. If I look at a timeline, he pitched Friday. So... May, th- May, March 31st, we go one, two, three, four. He's probably going to pitch either Wednesday or Thursday up in Buffalo. If everything goes well, then I I don't see why he wouldn't rejoin the team somewhere. I'll probably rejoin the team after, I want to say, Thursday the 6th. And then from there, he probably won't be activated from the injured list until... Probably Tuesday the 11th, Wednesday the 12th, somewhere in there, if everything goes well. We'll see if that is. If it isn't, who knows? But as I was saying, Friday in Worcester, he looked good. There was a couple hard hit balls, but not too bad. Uh, Otherwise, I think he's going to be fine for us. I mean, I'm with Whitlock, I'm just looking for five quality innings each time, and then you can use the bullpen piggyback, maybe use Josh Winkowski, who was phenomenal against the Orioles, or even use Tanner Houck if he slides back into the bullpen. But I feel as though if he pitches again like how he did today, he's going to stay in the rotation unless there's a big struggle somewhere either in the bullpen or by him. I mean, you never know. Things can change. We got, as I mentioned last time, we've really got eight major league starters quite well. Among eight starters, we have five spots, really. So if one starts to struggle, they can maybe mix and match it. Switch one out, put one into the bullpen. I know that's not really favorable, especially since relievers need to be stretched out into starters. And usually that takes a little bit of time. So it won't be preferable if they have to move someone to the bullpen and then back to the rotation. Because, you know, one mindset two, you know, what like I said, it's all about conditioning and getting them ready. So you don't really want to mess with them too much. I know for one, Garrett Whitlock doesn't care if he starts or relieves. Because I've asked him a couple times. uh, Once at Sox winter weekend out in Springfield over this past, uh, back in January. 
And then down in Fort Myers again, I asked him if he had a preference, if it was starting or relieving. And I mean, his response was what was expected. It was just, I just want to pitch. So I'm sure he's, at least he's not letting people know if he has a preference one way or the other. I think, he, like he said, he just wants to pitch. Of course, he might have one that he keeps to himself that maybe he prefers to start. I mean, he got drafted as a starter, came up through the minors as a starter, and then when he came to the Red Sox as a Rule 5 draft pick, they put him into the bullpen because, you know, obvious enough, you're not going to put this young kid who's coming off of, I believe it was Tommy John surgery, into the rotation when you're trying to keep him for the year. And then in the bullpen, he was just lights out. You know, I really think either way, the Sox will work out here with him. But I mean, it's... Ooh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little tired right now. But yeah, my point being is the pitching will get better than what we saw. Opening day, it was really just three guys who struggled. Kluber, who I know, that's an outlier. He's going to be better once he can grip the ball again in the warm weather. So we just got to hope the next time he starts, he does better. And, you know, it's not 40 degrees outside with the chance of rain and wind. <laughs> but the other two, Ryan Brazier, Caleb Ort. For those who don't know, like I said last podcast, I don't know why either of them are still on the roster, especially when you got guys like uh, Ryan Sheriff down in AAA who... Once again, pitched amazing today. That's twice in three days that he's done well. But, yeah, I mean, previous years, I was a huge Caleb Ort supporter. 2021, loved him in Worcester. Was so glad when he got brought up for, like, one day into Boston. 2022, I rooted for him during all of his struggles throughout his time in Boston last year. But it's hard to keep rooting for him when he gives up runs time and time again. Fortunately, today, he worked around... A double, well, a leadoff double. He worked around that, so that was fine. You know, he was able to get out of that one just fine. But how many more chances are we going to give the guy? And how many more chances is he going to, you know, let runs come in, or even just, uh, you know, give up hits? I mean, if they keep or at all, I believe it's going to be as a one inning roll. He throws hard, but here's the thing: he tires out quick. If you get one inning of or. And that turns into a shutdown inning. I will take that. I will take back everything I've said about Ort these past few weeks to months. I will, as Jared Carabas says, support Ort. You know, his little uh, hashtag that he's got going and along with what he's been saying on his podcast, which <laughs> I love, especially just all the fun that it gives off. But Ryan Brazier, I have no support for him. I loved him in 2018. I felt bad when he kept getting hurt time and time again after that, but he has just pitched awful since that one good year. I don't know why he's here. I mean, you take away Ort and Brazier out of the bullpen on opening day, we come back and we win that, and we're sitting at 3-0. and 3-0. and And you know what? People, would, people came into this saying that we weren't going to take two of three from the Orioles. Imagine what they'd be saying if we swept them. Everyone's predicting us to be last last in this division but look at this we are going toe to toe well what i'm gonna say isn't very convincing but we're going toe to toe with the orioles right now a team a young talented team which for them it's shown that their outfield defense needs work and their pitching's a little shaky right now but they've got a great offense and we're we're going blow to blow with them we're they score a run we're coming back we're scoring like today they they scored three in the top of the fifth we came right back, and we scored three more to take the lead back. This Sox offense, they don't want to lose. They don't want to lose. They want to prove everyone wrong. And they're going to they're gonna come in every day. They're going to come in. They're going to beat everyone that they can. We, got, we just beat Baltimore. We plucked the wings of these little birds. Well, I can't call them little because these guys are a little bit good, but we we plucked their feathers. We, we took down the birds. Coming in next to the Pirates, we gotta protect our treasure of Fenway against these Pirates. And we gotta take them down now. We gotta drive away these Pirates. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm predicting Sox are gonna take, worst case, two out of three. Best case, they're gonna take all three from the Pirates right here. I mean, who do the Pirates have that are gonna beat us? Of course, now that I'm getting overconfident, we're going to end up getting swept by the Pirates, but I do not see that happening. Two out of three is what I'm aiming for in every series to begin for the time being. At least, as I talked to 
my friends, I said, we got to take two out of three from Baltimore, two out of three from Pittsburgh, and two out of three from Detroit if we want to start strong. Especially since after that Detroit series, we then go to Tampa Bay, or Tampa comes to us. I don't have the schedule off the top of my head, but all I know is, is that after Detroit, we play Tampa. And when that happens, it's going to be tough. Because we need to win every chance we get. Let's see, we got Pittsburgh coming for three, then we head out to Detroit, and then, yeah, we go down to Tampa for, th for four games. So, preferably, we take th two out of three from Pittsburgh here. I would prefer three out of three, but I'm setting my sights average two out of three. You know, they're probably going to drop one. If I had to make a guess, if we're going to drop any, it will probably be that Wednesday afternoon game. And then we go into Detroit. You got Thursday afternoon. We're off Friday and then Saturday, Sunday. So once again, you go to Detroit, you got to take two out of three there. I don't know which one. Uh, if I had to guess with the Sox, it would probably be that Sunday afternoon game they'd probably drop because they're preparing to fly down to Tampa. And in Tampa, you, you got to split that series. I'm looking at things from a from a point of view of getting into the playoffs and trying to, you know, not get, I'm sorry, not get into the playoffs. Stay competitive for the playoffs. So you got to take two out of three from these lower teams, you know. If you leave Detroit after winning two out of three from both Pittsburgh and Detroit, you, you're sitting at six and three, and then you split with Tampa, that puts you eight and five. It's it's not the best, but it's better than what people probably would have predicted going into this season. You know, if you look at that schedule, people probably thought we'd lose two out of three to Baltimore, which honestly we almost did if it wasn't for that dropped little pop up in left field. <laughs> Thank you for that present. Uh. They'd probably say, yeah, you could take two out of three from Pittsburgh, and then they'd probably say we'd lose two out of three to Detroit, which if people, you know, based on that, we'd be sitting at three, four, and five instead of six and three, like what I want them to be at. And then they'd probably say we'd lose three or four in Tampa. So, you know, we got we to gotta just play strong. We got to just keep playing to our strengths, which is the offense working counts deep. Tiring out pitchers. I mean, today was great. They they made the Orioles starter throw 32 pitches in the first inning. I wish they could have scored more than one run. I mean, you had the bases loaded, no outs, and, you know, you only got one run that inning. But still, 32 pitches. He was out by the fifth inning, and they were into the bullpen. An already tired bullpen because it's thrown quite a few innings this series. But, you know, that's just how it is right now. The Sox, you know, it's been three games Am I over-exaggerating? Am I getting too confident? Yes. Is that how I am? Yes. And that's why this team, they're going to keep me going. They're going to keep me crazy, especially when everything else is going on and you just got to, you got to just watch baseball and just forget about it and just be like, hey, these are the good times. But, uh, oh, coming off that Orioles series, I got to say, co-MVPs for that. We got Adam Duvall, obviously the captain of this lineup today. Between yesterday, opening day, and uh, what's it called? And today, opening day, today, yesterday, we had a phenomenal performance by Adam Duvall, the man that everyone was calling to be designated for assignment over spring training when he couldn't hit. Let's look at his spring training stats real quick. He hit by the end 255 with four home runs. 13 hits and 51 at-bats, 60 plate appearances, okay? This one weekend, yeah, I know, it, it's it's one weekend, you know? <laughs> Three games he played, which is nothing, you know. It, it, we got 162, we got 159 more games to go. But at the end of his third game today, he's had 14 at-bats, he's 8 for 14, 2 home runs, 8 RBIs. 571 batting average is on base of 600. Yeah, I know. I'm hyping him up after three games. <laughs> but here's the thing. A wise man once told me, don't let the Sox get hot. So you don't want to let them come out of the gate and be hot. That's just what I'm saying. <sighs> but besides Duvall, another player that I'd have to say was great this weekend hernandez kike you know he was he was great both defensively and at bat you know he's 
what I can say about him is he's definitely healthy. Last year, he played injured even when he came back. And now, he's much better. I mean, he only had three hits against the Orioles, but two of those were home runs. He had three RBIs, and he's been playing great defense, especially when people questioned it. You know, who who would have thought? You know, the Sox team, we're 2-1 and one right now. I won't lie, some of the pitching, not so great. You know, got me worried. You got... Chris Sale giving up seven earned, but he's frustrated from that. He's pissed. He's going to come back. You know, it's Chris Sale. It's going to give him a couple. I'm going to give him a couple games before he's back to his normal self. Cy Young? No. But he's going to go deeper than three and a third or whatever he went, giving up seven runs. Corey Kluber, he's going to bounce back eventually. Helk, he did his job today. I I was actually pretty close. I said he was going to give us five innings. I didn't think he'd give up three runs. I thought it was going to be about two. I said before the game, the Orioles were going to score four. Two off Helk, and then two from the bullpen. I was pretty close. He gave up three, and the bullpen gave up two. But we got to do better than that. You know, you can't win every game when you're giving up, in this three-game series, ten runs, eight runs, and then five runs. You got you to gotta play, you gotta play better pitching. So tomorrow we got Cutter Crawford going. Hopefully he does well against this Pittsburgh lineup. I think he can. Like I said, last podcast episode, I think he's going to give you five, six innings a a night when he's on. If he's not, you're going to need the pen to help you out a bit. (laughs) But I mean, with the way that Chris Martin pitched, Josh Winkowski, um, Kenley Jansen in his one game, he was pretty good. You know, those three, they're pretty good. That's all I can say. Chris Martin didn't give up a single run, even when Baltimore faced him in every game. Then you also had uh, Schreiber, who looked good today. It was good to see him back to his uh, 22 self instead of how he was in spring training. Josh Winkowski, his velocity has been up, which I actually didn't know this until I read it on Twitter after. uh, His changeup is averaging like almost 93 miles per hour. I don't... That's actually... That that fascinated me. (laughs) I don't think I mean, obviously, you know, speed has been going up in the game lately, but I've always viewed you wanted a slower changeup than a faster one. So as long as it helps him, I'm fine with it. Zach Kelly, you know, I got to root for him. He was a former Woo Sox, great pitcher in Worcester, but a couple shaky outings. I'm hope, Hopefully once, you know, opening day jitters is away. I, I, I want to hope that his next time out he does better because I don't want to see him in Worcester. I want to see him succeed. Same thing as I was last year with Ort. I wanted Ort to succeed. I'm going to give him benefit of the doubt this year. Just until, I know it's going to be just until either Bello or or Whitlock is back and he's going to go back down. And I hate to say that, but I Ort's days on the Sox team is numbered unless he goes on a run before either pitcher gets back. As for Kelly... I want him to do well. I really like him. He's a nice guy from the few minutes I've talked with him. Uh, you know, just... I can't help but root for these guys that I've watched play in Worcester the past few years. Other than that, like I said, Chris Martin, very good. Caleb Ort was shaky. I liked him in the ninth inning, though he he took a lot of pitches to get through that. I think it was like 22 pitches to get through one inning. Each batter was going deep in the count, fouling pitches off. It's hard when, you know, you throw 97, but it's straight as an arrow. I mean, don't get me wrong. You put me in a box against that. I'm not even coming close to touching it. I'm not even fouling it. I think the fastest pitch I ever touched when I played baseball was like 74 miles per hour. And that was a foul down right field because I was late on it. (laughs) Back when I, you know, back in high school, 10 years ago when I played, I could touch 60s. But I couldn't, I, I could barely touch 70s, so... When I say, like, you know, he's throwing it straight as an arrow, I know I wouldn't even come close. I I don't even know if I'd be able to get into the box against, like, 97 without, like, <laughs> questioning if I'd be safe. But, anyway, point being, in the bullpen rankings, you got Jansen, Martin, Schreiber, and uh, Winkowski. Those are your key four right now. Richard Blyer, a little shaky today, gave up a couple of runs. Uh... Kelly didn't pitch today, but he also gave up a couple in the series. I definitely, if I had to rank them, I'd put in order of trust. Jansen is one. Two right now, I'm going to put Chris Martin. Those two, they're the keys to this bullpen success. If either one of them starts to struggle, we're in danger. 
third in that. I'm actually going to put Josh Winkowski. I'm putting Winkowski third after what I saw him do this weekend. Fourth is going to be Schreiber. Fifth is Kelly. Six is Blyer. Seven or eight, Brazier. Though, really, seven and eight, you can flip-flop. It doesn't make a difference to me. Because <laughs> I know one of them ain't going to be around much longer. Uh, so, this week we have... In the Pittsburgh series, we're going to have, I believe it's Crawford going game one, Pavetta game two, and then Kluber game three. So hopefully the weather's a little bit better so he can grip the ball. I trust Crawford. I, I want to see how Pavetta does. I really want this team to do well. I like a lot of these guys. Just from the small moments I was able to talk to them and at winter weekend or down in Fort Myers, they're nice guys, you know, obviously, you know. You don't win based on nice guys, but you can't help but root for them when they're nice guys. <laughs> you know, as for the lineup, you know, they pitched, they, they pitched, uh, the lineup was very good. You know, like I said before, deep counts in, in it and just everything about them, you know, they battled at bats. One huge player that I loved, Masataka Yoshida, which I found out he doesn't like the nickname Yoshi. He likes Masa. So Masa, the muscle man, he was great. Always putting the ball in play, always moving on offense, stolen base, ready to take extra bases. You know, he's just, hes it's only been three games. He's paying off already. He had two hits, two RBIs today. I, I think after three games, he's hitting like 300, which, you know, once again, three games, small sample size. But I can't help but like hype them up. Yeah. Four for 13. I think they're all singles, but that's besides the point. But, uh, other players in the lineup who did well, Justin Turner, um, Devers, obviously though, I will say there was one at bat. I think it was opening day where it might've been opening day or no, I'm sorry. I think it was, I think it was yesterday. He struck out in the ninth inning and, um, he chased a pitch where he should have learned to lay off it, but obviously, you know, he's 26. He's still young. He's got time to learn, and he's still going to learn. He's a young player. So the, I think it was, it was against the O's closer. I, yes, I believe it was Saturday. He chased a pitch to which he should have laid off for strike three. But anyway, it was one at bat. You know, he's 7 for 15 right now in the season. <laughs> so, hey, maybe... uh a young MVP season if he gets the home runs and RBIs up. Duvall, MVP of this weekend series. He is the, the weekend warrior for these Sox, winning them game two, driving in a bunch of runs this entire weekend. What was it? Eight RBIs in three games? Yeah, eight RBIs, two home runs. You know, this, this guy, he stays healthy. You got to remember, he led the National League in RBIs back in 2021. He can hit. You're not going to get a high average from him. That 571, that's going to drop probably about 350 points by the end of the year. You're going to get like 221. But if he drives in 120 runs, I don't care if he's hitting 221 as long as the runs are coming in. If he's hitting 350 with runners on base, but under 200 without anyone on, I'll take it. I'll take it in this point of the game because it's all about driving in the runners at this point. He's a middle of the lineup bat. He's not getting on for the people behind him. He's he's driving the people in who get on before him. <laughs> Which, I won't lie, I think having uh, Yoshida batting fourth and then him fifth is nice because Yoshida gets on, he can drive him in. You know, same thing with Turner also in front of him. Just the whole driving in these runners. You know, got to get them on base, got to gotta knock them in. For It's just... You know, I'm 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 literally stating simple baseball. <laughs> um, what else do I want to really go over? Uh, I've talked about Helk. Duvall was amazing. Same with Martin, Winkowski, Yoshida. Uh, down in Worcester, same thing for some highlights of them. The offense was great. Greg Allen was good. David Hamilton. Uh, the way with the new rules for pickoffs and stolen bases, the moment Hamilton got on base, I, I actually, uh, I just said it out loud. I go, he's going on the first pitch and sure enough, opening day, first pitch, he went. 
he uh you know he's got phenomenal speed it just shows it plays i i can't wait to see how that works in the majors some people might say oh he's not a major league player listen if he can hit 250 even if he has no major league power if he which by the way he hit a home run in triple a already but if he has no power just gets on base by singles every now and then doubles I will take it because his speed will let him turn a single into a double with a stolen base, which, you know, in the scorebooks, it's a single and a stolen base, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, Greg Allen looked good in the couple at bat, well, at bats in the three games I saw him play, which, yeah, I, I was in, I was at Polar Park all three games. I have a problem with baseball. I have an addiction to it. Um... I can't lie, Bobby Dahlbeck, I love the guy, favorite player on Worcester, favorite player on the Red Sox the past couple years, he did not do very good. Not even when he transformed into Robert uh, Dahl Specs when he started wearing his uh, prescription glasses on Saturday. I actually didn't even notice that. My dad pointed it out when uh, he was going up to at bat, he, he said, is Dahlbeck wearing glasses? And I said, they're probably shades for the field. And then I said, why would he be wearing them at bat? <laughs> So he actually got on base by a walk, and then when he got up, then um, the inning ended, and he took the glasses off, and he gave them to the coach, and uh, that's when my dad pointed it out, and he said, no, he is wearing glasses. So that surprised me. I didn't think he needed prescription glasses. Hopefully they help his uh, vision. He can hit the ball better. I don't, I don't know. I want him to succeed. He's just a great guy. Once again, that that vibe of these Sox players just being really lovable goofballs that we want to see succeed. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, Dahlbeck hasn't really done well. His first hit was today after three games. It was a triple, but he also struck out like twice and walked twice before that. Uh, Renato Hernandez got to play his first game today. He did pretty good. Couple hits, uh, drove in an RBI. Fitzy had a couple hits today. Uh, who else? Yesterday was an ugly game. They lost sixteen to six. Pitching was awful. Uh, Brandon Walter, he was he was all right to begin the game, but that last inning, he he left with the bases loaded, and then um, uh, who was it? Jake Jake Thompson, I want to say, came in, and he kind of just didn't close the door they were able to score quite a bit off of him and it got charged to brandon walter let's see i'm gonna pull up the stats from yesterday i believe it was jake thompson who came in <sighs> just give me a second while it's loading which by the way gudino he, he, he was great today i probably mispronounced his name i'm sorry but i'm not very good at names Five innings, scoreless, very good. And then the pen came in, Ryan Sheriff once again, great out of relief. That's twice now where he was good. Uh, Sugar was good today, and Politi, 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 AJ Politi, his, his stuff is good. I think, you know, if someone struggles up in Boston or gets injured, I think He's going to get a call up there. They already said that he's going to be used in a lot of high leverage end of game situations down here. So there's no doubt that Boston wants to see what he can do down here before giving him a chance. So yeah, okay, so this was uh, this was Saturday. Walter came in. I'm sorry, Walter didn't come in. Walter came out with two outs in the fourth inning, bases loaded, and then Jake Thompson came in, gave up, couldn't close the door. They ended up scoring in the fourth inning three more times. And so... After four, I'm, I'm sorry, after three and a half, it was six to two. Okay. Then where it really went off the rails was the sixth inning. When, and I mean, the, I don't even know really who he is. It's the first time I've ever seen him. Cam, Cam Boozer. He, he came in, couldn't even get through an inning and he gave up six runs. It was very ugly. The, the final hit, I believe, well, final hit, the final nail on the coffin for him was a grand slam to, uh, what's his name, uh, Beatty of the Mets, uh, Brett Beatty. So, guy's 30 years old, hopefully he can turn it around, I mean, this is the first, wait, 
I didn't even realize this. He's 30 years old, and this is his first time in AAA. Last year, he played Double A for uh, 19 games. Oh, he's actually been out of the league for a while, so I got to root for him. It's been five years, 2017, and then he came back in 2022. Got to root for that guy. I mean, even if he's not good, I just got to root for him at this point. Uh, Duran's been walking quite a bit. He had three walks today. He's He's been working the count quite a bit, definitely working on his eye. I think that's one thing he wants to do down here. Focus on what pitches to lay off of because he had, he's in two games he has four walks. He, ten, ten of his plate appearances he has four walks. His on base is at 500. That's definitely what he's doing. Uh, once again, like I said, Dahlbeck, he hasn't really been hitting it. He actually got robbed of a hit on opening day, which, okay, that can't be helped. But for the most part, he really needs to work on his hitting. Or rather, contact, because there's so many times I've seen him be late on his swing where it leads to a foul pop up into the right field uh, corner where it gets caught. <laughs> uh, Palka, oh my god, he he hit a blast opening day. So, that was nice. Alfaro has been fine. And of course, the one, the only, Ryan Fitzgerald. He's played a couple games, had a couple hits today. I believe he was hitless on opening day. And yeah, you know, I'm rooting for him as well. <laughs> if you haven't told, if, if you can't tell by now, I kind of root for everyone. Um, So this was going to always kind of be a little bit of a shorter one today. I mean, we're already up to about 32 minutes of recording time in this. I'm probably going to not go much longer just because, but, um, recap i gotta come up with a name for this but for the for now the weekend warrior it goes to adam duvall uh i gotta come up with a fancy like mvp name can i just come up with a fake sponsor like could i just call him like the f uh, i don't even know could i could i just come up with a fake sponsor like or would i get in trouble for that like you know like if i just said like adam duvall is this this series, like Kellogg's Fruit Loop MVP of the series, like is that not allowed? Because I, I, I could just go with that. I could just call him the the Kellogg's Fruit Loop of the week it goes to Adam Duvall, you know. <laughs> but uh, okay, so let me finish up then, because like I said, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. If I can just do a sponsor, if not, hey Kellogg's, let me know. I'm I'm willing to sponsor you guys. I love Fruit Loops. If not, uh, Cheerios. Uh. Who actually makes Cheerios anyway? Like, is it, it's like a, I forget. It, this tells you how uh, forgetful I am. Cheerios is made by General Mills. So, hey, General Mills, you know, I like Cheerios more than Fruit Loops. Well, Frosted Cheerios, because I'm a fat ass. But anyway, <laughs> guys, let me know. I mean, I'll, I'll advertise you guys on this. Uh, once again, pitching, it's going to get better, but one thing they definitely got to do to get better is not give up all those runs. If they don't, it's going to be a long season because it, it all comes down to the pitching or, well, it comes down to the pitching when the hitting is in a slump because I think the hitting will keep you in games when your pitching is bad. But the question is, can the pitching keep you in games when your hitting is bad? Because I really don't know. It's just... It's a question about that. Anyway, uh, going into the Pittsburgh series, I think they're going to win three out of three. That's what I'm rooting for. If they don't win three out of three, I don't think they drop more than one game to Pittsburgh. Um, depending on how busy the week is, I might try to put out an episode after that. After, well, after that series. Um, if not, at least next Sunday night, there'll be one after the Detroit series. So we'll see. Uh, thank you all for listening again, and I'll see you guys either Friday or Sunday night when I record again. All right. See ya.